Hot to figure out a way to help Tony get through today. Okay. <clears throat> You've seen the way he spent the rest of the night. Must have been real rough. Just about broke my heart watching him just sitting there holding Barbara Jean. He never stopped. He just kept holding her. Practically all night, he just kept looking at her and just kept holding her. Tried to talk to him, but he just couldn't get through. Spent the night in a chair in our room. It's like you got your hands full. Where's the dish towel? Tony, no, I'm fine. I'm no, you wash. I'll dry. I'll make some coffee, some toast. I don't need anything, Tony. Except detergent. Where do you keep it? I'll ask Tanya. I'll get it. Oh, I'll get it. Um, I just took with driver Jean and she's asleep. Oh, okay, thanks. Hi. Hello, Tony. How are you doing? Good. Well, Steve couldn't get away this morning, but he will be in touch. He's very concerned about you. Now, is there anything we can do? No, no, I'm fine, thank you. I've taken care of your schedule, so you needn't concern yourself about that. And Tony, if there is anything we can do, please let us know. Okay. Maybe I could uh, send over a student nurse to help with Barbara Jean. No, Barbara's fine. I'll get it. Oh, Tony, I can get it. See, that's all right, I got it. Hello? Is Tanya Jones there? Uh, no, she's not here. Uh, I'm a former patient of Tanya's. She gave me her home okay. phone number and made me promise to call her with a progress report. Will you tell her that Harriet Molino called and is doing wonderfully, thanks to her patience and help? Yeah, I'm, I'm very happy to hear the news. I'll make sure she gets the message. Oh, hey, Tony. So maybe you ought to let us field these calls if they come in, all right? No, I'm used to it. Tanya always gave out her number when she discharged a patient because she cared a lot about them and she wanted to follow their progress. It's okay. Miss Galano, thank you. No, don't even tell me about it. I mean, I see what's going on. He's in complete denial. It's like he's, a, he's on automatic pilot or something. What can we do? I'm going to try to talk to him. He's always been there when I needed him. He's always had a way with words with me. What are you going to say? I have no idea. Did you know that this was one of Tanya's favorite things? It was her mother's from her old country. Really? Yeah. It's beautiful. Wild, isn't it? True blue. <clears throat> Just like Tanya. She was the greatest, Tony, you know. She was the best sister-in-law anyone could ever ask for. And Felicia and I, we're going to miss her. Yeah. <clears throat> she was so real always was in touch with her feelings and you always knew where you stood with Tanya you know she made uh, she made Felicia and me promise to take care of you and PJ yeah I knew I could count on you that's for sure now Tony starting right now I know I said I'm fine Tony, Tony, I want to help you accept what's happened. I don't feel as though it's hit you, not really, not yet. So don't worry about me, okay? I know that it's tough to face the reality of this, Tony. But it's all happened so fast. It's got to be like a bad dream. I don't mean to sound harsh or be rough, but, you know, the sooner you face what's happened and talk about it, the easier it's going to be. You're a good brother, you know that? Where are you going? I'm going to take a shower, shave. I'll be down in a minute. Tony Jones.
very nice to meet you, Tom. I just regret it has to be under these circumstances. Very sorry about your wife. Thank you very much. You want some coffee? Please. Listen, you're going to have to make your own sandwich here. That's no problem. Does anybody need anything else? I think we're going to need one more pot of coffee okay. here. I'll okay. 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 Excuse me, doctor. Okay. Yeah. Hi, I'm Frisco Jones. <clears throat> nice Tony's brother. Listen, Tony's been like this all day, and it really scares me. Sort of perfect host, you know? And I don't really know what to do about it. Could you help me out? Tony? Tony? Oh, I am so sorry. No, it's okay. I feel so awful. Amy, honey, we could really use some help in the kitchen. Do you mind? Oh, of course. So what is this? What did you bring? Oh, that's the bag that Tanya was carrying when she got hit. The ambulance driver wanted me to bring it home. Oh, okay. I'll get it. Here. Well, why don't you just let me take no, that's it? That's okay. I'll get it. You know that shopping bag? What about it? Tanya was supposed to buy a special birthday present for Tony. It's his birthday next month, and if that's what's in the bag... Then he's gonna open it. And if he opens up the bag and sees a birthday present, he's gonna fall apart. I gotta stop. Wait, wait, let me, let me try to handle this. Okay? Yeah, good, Tom. Just Tom. How did it go? Is Tony coming down? I'll fill everybody in later on. Right now, Tony wants to see Frisco and Felicia. Well, that's a good sign if he wants to see us. Well, I guess we'll find out soon enough. Nice to see you. Tony. He's doing real good. up all right mm. i was just about to ask you the same thing tom said you wanted to talk to us yeah i do all right did you see what tanya gave me for my birthday it's for my office forever is right I want to apologize for giving you guys such a rough time and you know I did I made it hard on you because I couldn't let go I just couldn't give her up and I need to thank Tom for making me see what I was doing I still need your help though Whatever you need. The, um, arrangements. I can't do that alone. That's all right. That's what we're here for. No burial. Tanya believed in cremation. It's so do I. What about a memorial service? I know that. A lot of Tanya's friends and her co-workers keep asking me when and where, and I don't know what to tell them. I think that would be great. Where? I never thought about it. Um, you know, the only place I can think of is um, the hospital chapel where we were married because it was so beautiful. It was a beautiful wedding. So that's, that's the place. All right. And, uh, we'll make the arrangements. And I'll help. We can take over from here. No, I really think we need to do it together. Um, we do. Be but I need you to be with me every step of the way, okay? That's a promise. Because it's going to work out. It's all going to work. Because I've got my family.
Can I get you anything? No, I've got everything I need right here. Oh, Barbara, you're going to miss her. She was so special, and you never even knew her. I wish I could stick around, but I really have to go to work. Thanks, we'll manage. Thank you for staying with the baby. We'll see you guys at the hospital. It's time for her nap. Why don't I just take her upstairs? important things in our life. I just... just wish there was more we could do. Tony. You talk to me. I took her for granted. It's a great time to realize that, isn't it? You know, Tanya did so much for me and Barbara. Would you tell me that... that I told her I appreciated everything? Every day you've told her in a thousand different ways. But it wasn't enough, you know? Tony, she thought she was the luckiest woman alive. She loved what she had, and she knew that you loved her. She used to talk my ear off about how wonderful you were. Except we fought. Everybody fights, Tony. It's such a stupid thing. I didn't want her to go back to work after the baby was born. In fact, I insisted that she didn't go back to work. I wanted her to spend every minute with BJ. And it turns out I was right. She's never going to be with her daughter again. Tony. I wasted so much time. If I could just have that moment do over again, yourself, you know, Tony. I would tell Tanya that I love her. I would tell her over and over that I love her and that I can't live without her and that I would make her understand that my life doesn't exist without hers. Don't, don't think about it like that. can't. 
I don't know how I'm going to make it through this day. Or any other day. with Tanya. The only problem is Tony has to live with it. What about you? Are you all right? Hell, me? I'm useless. I, I don't know what I'm supposed to do or say. I, you know, I want to get inside of his head and, and help him, but I don't know how. There's good time heals all wounds. Yeah, well, not fast enough. I'm gonna get out of here. Where are you going? Some place where I don't feel so helpless. Somewhere not in here. I'm gonna go down to headquarters and see how the investigation's going, all right? Oh, baby. <laughs> don't ever think that I don't love you. Okay. Ever. No matter what I do or what I say. Other. However I may act. Promise me you'll never let that happen. <laughs> Find the phone number of the babysitter. Who's going to watch Barbara Jean while we're at the chapel? Well, that's all right. I'll stay with her if nobody else is available. Can't miss the service? Well, I'd rather not, but Tony's going to need Frisco and Felicia right now. I'd stay, but uh, they asked me to sing at the funeral. Nobody's going to stay. BJ's going to come with us. Mm. What? I want her there when they talk about her mother. Oh, Tony, I'll watch her, really. No, I'm positive. This is what Tanya would want. Let's go. Tony. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. I can't say how bad I feel. Thank you, Sean. Tanya was one of a kind. We're all going to miss her terribly. Tony, I wish there was something I could say or do to help ease your pain. Just know that you have my deepest sympathy, all of you. If there is anything I can do, then I will let you know. Thanks. Yeah, I, I appreciate it. Any progress in running down a hit and driver? No, not much yet. Uh, everybody has conflicting viewpoints. Uh, are you uh, Dr. Jones? Yeah, I am. I'm Ethel Cooper. Do I know you? I'm sorry, I, I'm not real clear right now. Oh, well, um... I was one of your wife's patients. Uh, I just heard the terrible news. And I had an appointment here today with, with Tanya. I, I promised myself that I wouldn't cry, but it's just that she was so loving, so, so giving. Why did such a tear sweet creature have to leave us? I have a ask myself that a lot of times, too. I, I know how you feel, Doctor. Uh, I lost my husband recently. I'm sorry. I pray that both our wounds will heal. Excuse me. We better get to the chapel, okay? Oh, yeah. I, I won't keep you that. Listen, um, thank you for your kindness. I just want you to know that I'll pray for you and, and your family, Dr. Jones. Uh, I'll never forget Tanya. The world will be a much less gracious place without her. Not as long as there's people like you in the world. You know, if, if we can keep Tanya alive in our hearts, then she doesn't die. And I appreciate you reminding me of that. I do. Thank you.
We're gathered here today to pay tribute to a dear friend and colleague whose tragic passing has left us all deeply bereaved. Tanya Jones was without question a woman who had it all, and no one deserved it more. She was a dedicated, professional, devoted mother and a loving wife. Her smile lit up this hospital like a Christmas tree. Her work here speaks for itself. As a therapist, she was unsurpassed in technical skills and bedside manner. It's very rare when you find those two talents combined so perfectly in one person. And I love to do that. It gives me sort of a warm feeling. Yeah, you know what we should do. We should sit in that side one night of the week where the four of us can just get together. You know, you're right. That's a great idea. Except for the five of us. Oh, <laughs> oh I'm sorry. Did I forget about you? The five of us. <laughs> if it's all planned ahead, then the husbands would have to be there. You know, you're right. And what an attitude. Tanya had the most positive outlook of anyone I know. Did you ever hear her complain about having to work long hours or carrying too heavy a workload? Probably, but you can bet none of her patients ever heard about it. Tanya knew how to make her friends and co-workers smile, offer a pat on the back, lend a sympathetic ear. Oh, my gosh! Hi, guys. Oh, I don't believe this. Look at this. This is wonderful. Oh, it is. <gasps> what are you Come to on, you? baby. Oh, Let's go this. see our oh, first Christmas tree. Nice great. surprise I've ever seen. Come here, Barbara. You want to see your first Christmas tree? There's no tree? question about which patient best knew Tanya's many fine qualities. We all know how she nursed her husband back to health after he'd been shot. Most of us figured it was touch and go for a while, but not Tanya. She knew Tony would recover. She willed it. Tony. Tony. What are you doing? What am I doing yeah, here? Yeah, what are you doing? Isn't a wife allowed to come and visit her husband in this hotel room? Oh, yeah. This is wonderful. Well, I feel wonderful being here. Mm. It's especially wonderful in light of, um... All the fights we've had lately? Mm-hmm. From now on, I want to forget them, okay? Just mm -hmm. wipe them out. Out of my head. Gone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love you, and I'm never going to hurt you. There's a hole in our lives now that will never be filled. But a place in our hearts that even her death cannot disturb. Tanya will live there forever. It was an honor and a privilege to call her my friend. I look forward to a long and joyous association with her wonderful family. May she rest in peace. And now, Frisco and Terry will sing some of Tanya's favorite hymns. Myself in times of trouble, Mother Mary comes to me, speaking words of wisdom. Let it be. And though the night is cloudy, there is still a light that shines on me. Shine until tomorrow. Let it be. Let it be, let it be, let it be.
and BJ and I will never forget you. about this? Yes. I've given it a lot of thought. It's a big commitment. How do you feel about it? Well, I think it's going to be a lot of work. Yeah. Definitely a big change in our lifestyles. <clears throat> the bottom line is I think it's the right thing to do. It's just a matter if you're up to it. I'd like to give it a try. Good morning. To our for up bright and early. <clears throat> Coffee's on the stove. I already gave Barbara Jean her breakfast. Thanks. I was hoping he'd be feeling better today. I can't expect him to get over it overnight. It's, it's going to take some time. It's going to take time for all of us. That's why this is such an important decision. <sighs> you sure we'd be doing the right thing? Well, I'm off. Where to? General Hospital. I work there, remember? You considered taking a few days off? No, what I need is to keep myself busy. There's too many memories in this house of Tanya. We want to talk to you about the house. Uh, could it wait? I'm sort of late. It's not going to take that long. It's important, too. Okay. Felicia and I have been... I've been talking and... Well, you know, it's going to be a big responsibility taking care of this house and a daughter. Tell me about it. I'm always amazed that Tanya could run this house and manage her schedule at the hospital. Have you thought of bringing in any help? You know, you don't worry about it, because I know you've got a lot of other things to do than babysit. Well, that's not what I meant. Well, what did you mean? We've got an idea that may solve your problem. What? Felicia and I'd like to move in here. Help take care of the house and Barbara Jane. We'd like to pitch in and just help keep things going around here. You know, you don't have to do that. I mean, you don't have to make those kind of sacrifices for me. What sacrifice? Yeah, this be like a vacation for us. It's pretty tempting. I want to take care of that baby. And keeping this house is the only way I can think of for repaying Tanya for everything she ever did for me. I don't believe you guys. So, is it a deal? I love it. I would love it. You are, you're so good to me. That's what families are for. Come here. <laughs> yes. Yes. You're not too little. <laughs> Everything's gonna work out. You'll see. Can I go to work? <laughs> go to work. You guys love Beth. Oh, we did it. Good going. We'll see if you'll be saying that a month from now. Let's go. We can make it work. Speaking of work, I gotta go and try to find the guy who did this to Tanya. What the hell are you doing? 
didn't think you'd be back this soon. Oh, obviously. We just figured that... Why don't you just mind your own business, all right? We didn't mean to upset you, Tony. Get out. All right. Mom, we're just trying to help. You want to help me? You leave me alone. You stop rushing me. Now, I'll do everything. I'll take care of all of this on my own time. And until that time, I want everything left exactly as it's been, all right? Is that clear? It's bad judgment on our part. It won't happen again. I'm sorry. on your mind there seems to be a lot on your mind doesn't there did you find the driver of the car no not yet we got close but we ran into a dead end but i promise you i'm gonna find him that's not why i'm here anyway it's felicia's message and i'm sorry i should have called that's okay really. no no it's it's, right. it's my fault i should have called I, i've just been busy yeah you have too busy Listen, you're working too hard here. There's you're working yourself into the ground. There's it's not good. Where were you last night, huh? I was working. There's There's uh, Felicia was working pretty hard herself, you know. She, uh, she found this recipe in Tanya's file that said Tony's favorite. She made this, this huge spread for dinner thinking that you'd really enjoy it. You know, I she went believe you. You thought that I was going to enjoy being reminded it hurts, Frisco. Don't you understand that? It hurts. And I don't think you understand it, either of you. Dr. Bowman, to the seventh floor of the car. Maybe I'm starting to. No, I don't think you do. You know, I know you mean well. I know Felicia means well. Tony, just stop right there. We're just trying too hard, aren't we? Dr. Yeah. Well, this may not be an excuse. It may not make much sense in terms of what we've been doing, but we are only doing it because we love you. I know that. And I love you both. I wouldn't be able to survive if you guys weren't helping me. So you're going to come home for dinner tonight? I doubt it. I've got some tests to schedule. Well, how long can that take? Just go on without me, all right? If I'm not home, you go to bed. I'll see you in the morning. I'll wait up for you if you want. It's no problem. No. Just kiss BJ for me and tell her her daddy loves her. news for you. Okay. We have a positive ID on the car. With a bit of luck and cooperation from our computers, we could find out tonight who was driving it. Great. Good luck. I know that you were worried about tomorrow. But can't we go to bed? I'll help you relax. Hi. Oh, sorry. I was going into the kitchen. You guys want something? No. No, thanks. Maybe you ought to call Tom Hardy, though. What? Yeah, he, he came by a while ago. You were asleep. He didn't want us to wake you. He said he needed to talk to you. Something to do with one of his patients? That Hardy is something. You know, there's this kid who was Tom's patient, and I had, until I had to run some tests on him, and then, uh, you know, I, I found some serious neurological problems that he had, and he's my patient, and I know how to take care of him. 
He just wanted to talk to you before you went into surgery tomorrow. Well, I wish him a lot of good luck, because until I'm out of surgery and that kid is out of danger, I don't want him near me. And I certainly don't want to listen to Tom Hardy. Marvelous Marvin. What's going on? Tony's operating on the kid who killed Tanya. What? It was just confirmed Corey Blythe is a hit and run driver. Oh, dear God. I can't believe this is happening. I can't believe this. There was just something I could have done. That... I don't believe Or somebody it. else could have done. Tom! Something wrong? Why were you so determined to talk to Tony last night? Well, I, uh, I had some hospital business to discuss. You wanted to stop him from operating on Corey Blythe, didn't you? I can't get into that. For you know that Corey Blythe is the hit-and-run murderer. You wanted to stop Tony from operating on him, and you let him go do it, didn't you? Look, I tried to stop it. I'm as upset about this as you. Yeah, well, not half as upset as my brother's gonna be. Oh, God. At least he's gonna, gonna find out after he gets out of the operating room, let's hope. Can you imagine holding a knife over someone, the power of life and death, knowing that he killed your wife? senior named Corey Blythe. The suspect is still at large, but reportedly close to being apprehended. We'll have more details as they're forthcoming. Now we return you to the musical program for this afternoon. Call Dr. Hardy. No. But I thought... Tony, we, we have a job to finish. Let's do it. Bobby, where's Tony? Probably outside our walk. Let's go. We have to talk. I already know. About Corey? How do you know? Um, there was a radio on an OR. There was a news report. Well, I don't understand. That couldn't be. It hasn't been released, not officially. The reporter. Damn it, the reporter. I'm gonna do something about this. Tony, I, I wish I could have gotten to you when I had the chance. I, I've never been in a position like this before. It makes two of us. How did the operation go? It's pretty good. I think he's gonna make it through. You know, he's responsible for what happened to Tanya. You know what you did? I didn't operate on Tanya's killer. On the table, a patient is just like any other patient. He had a serious problem. I tried to correct it, and I'm just glad he made it through. How can you be so forgiving? It's not a question of forgiveness. Tanya's gone. Can't bring her back. And I don't see how I could let her death bring about another one. Excuse me. I have some things to do. Well, I'm going to end up as acting. is how Tony's going to react when he realizes what he's really done. Stand by for that. Excuse me. Can I see both you in my office right now, please? Dr. Lanham, please call Dr. Denton in oncology. So all patients in this hospital are under a doctor's care. It doesn't matter who the patient is. So if you want to see one, you go through a doctor. Is that clear? Yeah. Good. When's this kid going to be able to answer questions? As soon as he's lucid enough to answer the questions accurately. 
And it's not only a question of whether he'll answer, be able to answer him physically, but psychologically as well. Are you still planning to treat this patient as a psychiatric case? Yes. That's news to me. Well, Tony, everything about Corey indicates that he still needs treatment in that But area. I thought his psychological problems stem from the, uh, the accident. You know, I can't do this. I can't stand here and calmly talk about the guy that killed my wife. I can't do this anymore. To excuse myself, Tony, I can't talk about Corey's case anymore or this accident. I'm sorry, Tony. I didn't mean to bring hey, this listen, up. It, you know, it's your job. It's not my job anymore. I'm taking myself off Corey's case. Wait a minute. I don't understand, Tony. You saved this kid's life. Yeah, I did. And it is one thing to save the life of a kid who killed my wife, but it's another thing to be his doctor. I'll talk to your father about it. I'll try to get somebody else to take the case. Oh, hi. Listen, um, you finished now? Yeah, I am. I'm gonna go home. You know, I was, I was thinking something. Um, oh, no. Yeah. I, I was thinking it's been a while since we went out for a beer together. What do you say? I say no. I'm going home. No, wait a minute. I called Felicia. Everything's under control at the house. So we don't have to be home for a while. Supper's not for another hour. I know, but you want to talk to me about No police stuff. talk. I don't... No hospital talk. Just a little drinking. You promise? Just alcohol? That's it. Great. Let's go. Okay. So I suppose this is going to be um, like a pep talk? Mm -hmm. No, actually, I don't have to say anything. I'm just enjoying having a beer with you. That's all. No talks. Fine with me. Mm -hmm. Well, I like sitting here with you, too. Except that as brothers, sometimes silence says a lot. I don't know what you mean, but I'll take your word for it. Well, like right now, I think your silence says something like, um, you should get on with your life. Yep. Something like that. Yeah, Tom yeah, told me I had to do that, too. Well, then maybe that's the thing you ought to do. Yeah, I probably should. It's not that easy, though. Did you know that I still wake up at night sometimes? And just for a second or two, I think Tanya's beside me. And that a week or so, yeah, you know, a week ago, I woke up because the baby was crying. And when she stopped crying before I went to get her, I thought it was because Tanya was with her. And it was just for that second. But the, because of that second, I still have to go through this whole thing all over again. You know, I guess I'm gonna have to do that a long time. I don't know. I don't know. I wasn't aware of that, though. Well, God, hopefully you won't. Mm, death, heaven, beseech. What was that? Beseech death, heaven, with my cry. What the hell are you talking about? Oh, you wouldn't know. It's Shakespeare. Well, why wouldn't I know? Well, just because you would. But, you know, this wasn't happening to me, this other stuff, that much until I started this thing with Corey Blythe. It's so weird. Why did I have... You know, why do I have to know who the person is that killed her? But saving his wife on an operating table, I mean, Ugh. Tony, that is something not a lot of doctors have probably had to do or face, or if any at all. It's not that bad because... I am a doctor, and I took an oath, and that's easy. It's just what I had to do. What was hard was, you know, Tiny was so forgiving. And when I was in the operating room on him, I was, like, praying to her that I could be forgiving, like she was. Well, sounds to me like she got through to you. Well, you know, something, you're right. That's amazing. You think she did? Thanks. How are you thanking me for? 
Because maybe she'll help me do what she wanted me to do, what you want me, what everybody wants me to do around here, which is get on with my life, which I can't seem to do. I'm glad we had a beer. I am glad. This is Well, you know, I don't great. have bad ideas all the time, every now and then. It's, it's pretty seldom, though. You know, but I'm going to do this. I'm going to continue to listen to her because it... It makes me feel better. Oh, Tanya. And I'm gonna do something else, too. What's that? You always hit me. You always hit me all the time. My whole well, life, you hit me. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna do something great. I'm gonna start taking pictures of BJ again. Let Tony take care of his own family and he <laughs> should have it. Hi, Tony. How's right. it going? Oh, good. It must have been that uh, talk we had last night. Yeah, good, good. Uh, Jay, uh, listen up. Uh, why don't we all go in and get some coffee, okay? Take that, baby. There you go. Come on. Nice coffee in the morning. Nothing smells better, does it? Come on. concerned you're right absolutely right. much better Corey gets excellent post-op care I get to stay out of the picture and I don't have any more emotional involvement not only that but you get to go on with your life right. don't forget that speaking of that you know Tony one thing I haven't said and that is that I'm proud of you thank you oh me too and that's why I'm everybody sure at the hospital is proud of you too they talk about your professionalism and your guts and I know it's not easy to get over I'll never get over her well well not completely I know that but at least it'll help to get this hearing on the way, and, and I'm really trying to push it on as quickly as I can. Thanks. I appreciate that. But you know, uh, Corey's always going to be a patient of mine, no matter what he did. Tony, what You know, honey, we're running behind. We don't have time for breakfast, so don't worry about making any, okay? I won't. And I want to kiss BJ before I leave. You know, I wish I could trade places with you and stay home today. Mm-hmm. Thanks a lot. It's down. nice to know that I can count on you. Shh. Come here, look at these bills. Look at all of them. And these all should be paid by Tony. Well, his head is in a different place right now. Yes, but the you. bills come right here. We'll pay them. Have you forgotten that we have an apartment at the Brownstone and bills also go there? I know that. We'll pay those, too. The rent is due today. We have $32 in our checking account. And I get paid today, so I'll go over to the Brownstone and I'll write him a check. What about the rest of them? Well, it's nothing that won't wait. Hello. I want to speak to Dr. Jones. This is Frisco Jones. What can I do for you? Yeah, what's with you people? The lady of the house, give me your rubber check and they're taking it out of my pay. Oh, well, that's terrible. What kind of people are you? Do you realize the kind of money we're talking? We're talking more than I make in a week. Uh, I see. Oh, yeah? I'll mm -hmm. tell you something else. I'm paying for it. I own it. You get me? I think I do. So you don't make good on that check by noon today. We're coming to remove the hot water heater. No. No, that won't be necessary. Oh, no? No. Uh, I'll see you before then. You better. I'll take care of it. Goodbye. Who was that? Oh, it's police business. Anna wants me to take care of something. Is that right? Yeah, I gotta go, honey. Frisco, you remember what happened to Pinocchio, don't you? You ready? Yep. Let's go. Okay. See you later, baby. Yeah. Oh, here, honey. Sorry, I won't have time to read it. Me too. What am I supposed to tell Tony? You huh? don't have to tell me anything. I just heard all of this. I'll try to spare my feelings, okay? Felicia is absolutely right. You are lucky to have her, and you should never put me in front of your wife. I'm sorry, I got carried away. No, it's my fault. I should have seen what was going on. I'm the one that's being selfish here. Well, I, I was just tired. It's really not that bad. Yeah, it's probably worse. From now on, what I want you guys to do is to move back to the Brownstone and get on with your life. And just do one favor for me. What? Help me find a housekeeper. Okay. And what is this about a water heater bill? Oh, well, I already paid that. It was late, just a little late. So you've been paying all my bills? Well, not all of them. We ran out of money. You know, this is incredible. 
What would I do without you guys? Thanking you the whole time for everything. Wow, what a surprise. What the hell are you doing home so early? I'm pouring wine for your wife. Uh, you want to join us? Well, no offense, but I think I'm going to take her out for a nice romantic dinner. You can join us and ruin it if you'd like it. Oh, babysitter. no, I don't think so. I would never do that to you two. <clears throat> I have a bit of good news for both of you. I think I may have solved the housekeeping problem. Yay. You're volunteering. You're giving up your day <laughs> job, right? No cigar. Okay. Sam's mom is very available for the position. That's terrific. Will you do the interview? Yeah, I'm getting used to it. Well, here, let's have a toast. <coughs> To Sam's mom. To Sam's mom. Keep your fingers crossed, baby. <laughs> mm. Here we go, Barbara Jean. So, are you all set? Yes. Yeah. Hey. Well, are you going to miss me? Miss you? Mm -hmm. What are you talking about? Mm -hmm. Gonna miss Uncle Frisco, the human dumping ground. Get more food in my lap than she ever got in her hey. stomach. I just think how much you'll save on dry cleaning. What time do you have to go to work? I'm not. I took the day off. Really? Yeah. It's occasion. I thought it'd be a good day to show that housekeeper the ropes. Oh, man. You think she's going to work out, Sam's I mother? I hope so. She doesn't do kids, you know? Well, tell her that she can forget the windows if she'll take care of Barbara Jean. Oh, we'll manage. You guys want some coffee? No, I don't. No, thanks. Tony, would you like some? Sure. <laughs> He's up to it? Up to what? Well, managing this place without us. I mean, it's going to be pretty tough. Uh, we're indispensable, and this place is going to be pretty paralyzed without us. Mm -hmm. Don't forget to write. <laughs> you know, it is going to be strange without you guys. This place was starting to feel like home. You know, just when things were starting to settle down, we have to leave. Settle, settle down. down? I practically had to pry the two of you off each other's throats. You were walking out on me the other day. You call that a stable relationship? Yeah, but now we're walking out on Tony. You know, it's going to be one of those things where we'll see each other more than we ever did. Don't be a stranger, okay? BJ and I'll camp on the brownstone steps, okay? It is going to be a little different squeezing into that little apartment after we're used to this great big house here. Well, I guess we'll just have to be all over each other, won't we? Mm-hmm. If you call, the phone might be off the hook. It'll give us some time to spend a little uh, company acquaintances with Jake and Bobby and everybody else at the Brownstone. Chris, could you leave my coat upstairs? Yeah, I think I might have. Um, I think I'll go get it. I'll be right back. What's up? Oh, Jake is going to represent Corey Blythe. He what? He's going to take that hit and run case. Why? Guess you're going to have to ask him yourself. Maybe it's uh, the same reason I operated on the kid. Tom asked me the other day about a lawyer. I said, Jake was the best one in town. But I had no idea that he'd take this case. I mean, that's Tanya's kid. I just want to forget this accident ever happened. <sighs> well, obviously, Jake doesn't want to. Don't tell me you two are fighting now. No, but Mr. Meyer and myself might have a little run-in pretty soon. Jake? Why? He's defending Corey Blythe. Why would he? I guess the most important thing to Jake is a case. Obviously not his friend. Thanks. Hello. Yeah, this is your uh, <clears throat> favorite and only brother. Hi, only brother. So I got some news for you. What is it? Who is it, you mean? Just remember this name, okay? Kate Rosner. And who is that? She's the assistant DA assigned to Corey Blythe's case. I met her yesterday. She's great, Tony. Couldn't have asked for a better prosecutor. Well, good for you. I know how hard you've worked on that. If anyone can nail this kid, she can. Well, I barely touched this one. Oh, I sit down? Well, not the warmest of welcomes, but I'll take it. How'd you find out where I was? I'm a detective, remember? My powers of deductions are legendary. I can track people anywhere. So the operator at the hospital told you where I was, right? Yeah. Any sleep last night? There's <sighs> always something there to remind you in there. Mm -hmm. It's hard under ordinary circumstances, but this damn hearing... I wish I could make it go away for you. Well, I don't want the memories to go away. I don't want to forget Tanya. But I do want to bury this hit and run. This whole thing. I'm afraid you're going to have to do a little shoveling on your own. What do you mean? I figured if anybody had to give it to you, I would. A subpoena. I've been 
called to testify in the hearing of Corey Blythe. For which side? Defense. You know, it's not enough that I had to save Corey's life on the operating table. Now I have to save him in the courtroom. I'm not sure I can do that. I wish there was something I could do so you didn't have to testify. So do I. I pulled strings, but it turned out there were no strings to be pulled. I couldn't do anything. Well, I appreciate you giving me this. It would have been a lot worse if it was a stranger. That's what I figured. So what do I do? You know, my testimony can swing this. Well, Jake's counting on that. I was the surgeon that got inside Corey's head, literally. I saw the exact area of the blood vessel malfunction. I'm the only one in the world that can say that. Well, now you're gonna have to say it on the stand. How do I say it? I can color it either way. Now, Corey suffered from brain damage, that's a fact. But the interpretation of what that damage did and how it affected his behavior, it's, you know, it's another story. But it's only a story that you can tell. Isn't there some way of straddling the fence, sticking to medical facts and leaving the interpretation to Tom Hardy or somebody else? Jake is not going to let me get away with that. And Tom's not qualified to make a neurological judgment. But it isn't fair to ask you to play God. That's what I'm having to play, though. I can slant it either way. I can make Corey go to jail. Or I can paint him as a victim of physical circumstances beyond his control and he goes free. What's it going to be? I don't know. I don't know. I'm not going to know until I open my mouth and the words come out. If you were sitting on the witness stand right now, what would you say? There's a part of me that wants revenge. And I want it so bad I can taste it. shock you Wait. no I just have never heard you talk like that what would you do I tell the truth the truth is is that Tanya's dead and nothing I can say is going to bring her back so I got nothing to lose the testimony you just made I couldn't have done it you told me to tell the truth I did well giving advice is one thing taking it is another you have my respect I'm just glad it's over excuse me I'm desperately sorry for what I put you through on that witness stand to me if there are any other way Jake, you were just doing your job and I'm sorry I made it so difficult for you don't be ridiculous what you did on that witness stand was above and beyond the call I'm grateful, no matter what the outcome is. I don't think I'm going to stick around for this verdict. I've had about all this case I can stand. I'm going to go home.